Hello and welcome to module 2 of our modular Excel VBA course, Basic Macro Maths. So here is the scenario. I've got a table where I've got a loan value in column A. In column B I've got the annual interest rate. In column C I've put monthly repayments. And in column D I want to calculate how much balance is outstanding on the loan after five years. One way of solving this would be to use your knowledge of how to use formulas within Excel and you might come up with a formula that looks something like this. As you may notice it's not very user friendly in fact it's almost impossible to tell what's going on. So instead we're going to try and fill in the third row of this table without any formula at all instead we're going to find the answer in a macro. So just to refresh module one, we go Tools, Macro, Visual Basic Editor. We identify the sheet, which as we may notice is X1. And then we proceed to write the code into that sheet. So first we give it a title. So in this case, it will be Sub Interest Rate Calculator. As before, I would recommend restoring the window down so you can see what's going on in the spreadsheet. The easiest way to tackle a problem like this is to give the different numbers meaningful names. So in this case we have the interest rate in cell B3. Now we could notate cell B3 as cells 3, 2. And we could use that notation throughout the macro. But that doesn't confer much information. Instead why don't we give it a name such as interest rate and we make interest rate equal to cells 3, 2. So every time we wish to write code about the interest rate we simply have to write interest rate. So assuming no repayments the amount outstanding each year is equal to cells 3, 1 that refers to A3 multiplied by 1 plus interest rate. We can give this a name as well. Let's call it no repayments. Finally let's introduce one more variable which will be outstanding. Outstanding is equal to no repayments minus 12 times the amount that you repay each month, which is in cell C3, so can be referred to as cells 3, 3. So outstanding is now equal to the amount outstanding on the loan after one year. And just to check that things are working so far, we can enter that value into cell D3. Once we've written the macro, we can press play. So the amount outstanding after one year is now visible in cell D3 and is equal to $145,500. So now let's work out what the outstanding balance is after two years. Now the interest rate is unchanged, but our outstanding balance is now equal to the variable outstanding. Therefore, no repay two, as we can call the variable, will be equal to outstanding times 1 plus the interest rate. Outstanding 2 can be calculated accordingly as being no repay 2 minus 12 times cells 3, 3. There's a danger that we might type everything longhand and type things 5 times in order to get the outstanding balance after 5 years. Fortunately, there are a number of ways of saving time when in an Excel code window. The simplest one is to copy and paste. Therefore, if you select text under a cursor, press copy, then go to where you want to put the text and press paste, you can copy the same code and we can just adapt the code. So, no repay 3 would be equal to outstanding 2 times 1 plus the interest rate, meaning outstanding 3 would be equal to no repay 3 minus 12 times the monthly repayments. So we don't want to put in cell 3, 4 anymore the outstanding value after one year, so we can delete that code. 
Now we have outstanding three, we know how much is outstanding after three years. So we're just going to finish off by copying the same code again and changing it for four years. And then we'll copy it one more time and calculate how much is outstanding after five years. When that's done, we can simply pop the value for outstanding 5 into cell D3. Now let's try running the macro that we've written to calculate the outstanding balance. Having pressed play, we can see that the outstanding balance will be a mere $123,000. What happens if we now want to calculate the outstanding balance that should go in cell D4, D5 or D6? Well, what we can do is adapt the existing code to be more flexible and we can put in which row number we want to calculate the outstanding balance for. So if we introduce a variable row num and make this equal to the row for which we want to make the calculation, in this case 4, we can put that in place at the top of the macro. That means all the references we've made to row number 3 should no longer have the number 3, instead we should change them to say row num. It can be very difficult to go through and change everything reliably from 3 to row num. You might miss something out, you might change a 3 which was referring to for instance column C such as in this cells 3, 3 here. So in the interest of saving time and being more accurate, what you can do on the edit menu is go to edit, then replace, and you can search for 3 and replace with row num. However, this would replace the 3's that we don't want to replace with row num. So if we're a little bit smart about it, we can identify that where a 3 is a row number, it always has a bracket preceding it and a comma following it. Therefore, we can find that phrase and replace it with bracket row num comma. So if we find next, we can replace, replace, and of course we can simply replace all. It works the same as find and replace within a Word document or within a normal Excel spreadsheet, but is a very handy way of saving time. So now we can rerun our macro for row 4 and lo and behold we get an outstanding balance of $87,000. In order to get a result for row 5 all we have to do now is change row num to 5 and hit play, change row num to 6 for row 6 and hit play. This is not the most efficient solution to this problem using Excel Visual Basic but it is a solution. We will work on this problem later on in the course in order to create more efficient and even simpler macros.